kind of awesome that from, you know, you first start playing till six years into your pro career, it's a lot of stuff still the same. Usually hopping a fence, dragging a net out. Preseason is pretty similar for all sports. Like, it's just you either doing what a trainer's told you to do or kind of working on it. Salvador is where my mom's from. Panama is where my dad's from. Uh, I'm a first generation American. Uh, born speaking Spanish first. And uh, it's definitely a demographic that's not represented in lacrosse. I like to, you know, show that for them. And I think it makes my family a little happy when they see it on TV or in pictures. So, and it's a good reminder to me of like what, what it took for me to get here. So I like, looking down and seeing that. When you say that they worked really hard to get you here, what did they do? My dad got drafted by the Yankees and came straight to upstate New York to play for their AAA team. Uh, during the Civil War in El Salvador, my mom immigrated over. Just having nothing to fall back on separates an immigrant from like being a traditional, like wealthy American, especially someone who falls into like the white Anglo-Saxon, like Protestant part of lacrosse. It's the complete opposite of an immigrant coming here with zero dollars to their name, zero waiting for them when they turn a certain age, no leads into jobs, no, uh, just nothing. You're coming in at square one. Did he uh, ever discourage you from playing? and try to get you to play baseball? Uh, early on he was upset, to say the least. Like I was, I played up until, it was about to start being uh, when the kids can actually pitch, because it was still a pitcher machine up until maybe third grade in Maryland where I was, up, where I was at. And uh, so right around that time when I started playing lacrosse, he was like really mad about it. And then he was like, as long as you're playing sports, then he saw how expensive it was too, and that was also did not go over well. So it, it was kind of more like snarky remarks, and he was mad about it, but he never once was like, no, you're not going to this, you're not playing. So my mom went to the Calvert Library and got Lacrosse 101, and like introduction to lacrosse, little like pamphlet, thin like paperback books, and was just reading about the rules and this, that. And my dad was like, what is this for? Like, this is ridiculous. Like, I'm reading online that a pro player makes like $5,000. A-Rod just signed for 30 mil a year for like 10 years. Like, this is ridiculous. And he was like related it to that. It was just like, this sport is. And then he got into it. He started watching college. And he was like, hey, some of these guys are pretty big. And then he was, saw the scholarship opportunity and like instantly became the biggest lax rat ever. <laughs> Seeing that you know there was, it was, it was going to pay off in some way, whether that be free education, or I mean, yeah, that's what it was, free education. <laughs> but yeah, he's obsessed with lacrosse. I think he's really, he's very proud. Both my parents are. Does he also think that there's more to get out of you? Yeah. And to what extent? And what has he told you he thinks he can do? I, I feel like every parent says it, but I mean, they've always just thought I, oh, I should be just the best player in general. Uh, and that's something my parents have said at a young age, and I kind of wrote it off as like, that's what every parent says. Like, yeah, you're, you're the best baseball player. 
you're the best mathematician, you're the best in the world at what you do. I'm kind of at a crossroads with figuring it out because my first, at first it was frustrating that I wasn't what I would consider a top player given how much time I put into it and like how much greater my fitness levels are I feel than most players athletically, strength and conditioning wise. And I started to look at it differently. I feel like in every sport, like you have your Durant and your like James Harden body types. You have like your Giannis and LeBrons. In soccer, you have a Ronaldo, you have a Messi. And it's skills, which is really important. And that's kind of what makes sports great. Like it can look different, but I'm like, you know, being as fit as I am does not mean I have to be a top player. So I was like that, and it's proven to not be the case. So I'm like, now it's, there's something else and it's, 100% mental to becoming a top player. What was your edge growing up? Honestly, I just, I looked at the demographic of the sport and where I was coming from. And I was like, there's just no reason for anyone to be playing harder than I am or working harder than I am. I, from where I come from and where my parents, what my parents had to go through for me to be here, there's just no reason to not just outwork everyone. It's what like Latino people do here. They, they work hard and then it's like a part of me as well. Is there anyone in the league who can cover you? I think I, I didn't even get a chance to go at everyone last year, uh, but I don't know, I like my odds against every player. I, I think some guys are better than most uh, defensively, but I mean, I, I think on a good day, I think I can get, get by anyone. Do you, ever, do you ever wish that you could be, have the attitude of Michael Jordan? Yeah, 100%, always. Why don't you? I don't know, I, it's probably just being an overthinker. It was not born being like, it's me time, you know? <laughs> it's funny, because that's like what my dad preaches. He's like, you have to be, it's all about you. Like, be, be the guy, be like the alpha midi. 